alright. In this video you will learn how to automatically generate a cover page and a table of contents in your Word document. I already pre-created a Word document here containing climate change topics. And I just want to acknowledge these two websites where I got these data. The ArcticIceProject.org and the GlobalWitness.org websites. Back to the Word document, I have added a glossary section here, and then all the other topics about climate change. These texts were just copied from the websites I've shown and directly pasted here in the Word, so all of them are formatted as normal texts. No title, no heading 1, 2, or anything else. To make the document more alive, let's add a cover page. You don't need to design anything manually since MS Word has a lot of pre-formatted cover page already. Just go to the Insert Ribbon tab. Then the first ribbon here is Cover Page. Just expand that, and you'll have a lot of design choices here for a cover page. When you go to More Cover Page from Office.com, there's more options here. I am using just an Office Home version here, and I assume there's a lot more cover pages available in higher MS Office versions than Home. Let me select this one. There we go. In just one click, we now have a beautiful cover page for our document. We can now just update the details in this cover page, or delete the items that you don't want to be there. And we're done with our awesome cover page. Okay. To make things more interesting, let's now add a table of contents. And no, we don't need to type anything when we add the TOC, since Word can add that automatically. Just click on the place when you want to insert the TOC, then go to the References ribbon tab. You can see the first ribbon here, the table of contents. When we expand this, we will have few options here for automatic table. And we also have a manual table here, but why use that when we have an automatic one? I'll select the first automatic table here. There we go. We now have a table of content without the need of manually typing even one word. Word automatically detects the document, and based on the font formats, it groups the contents of the document to determine what will be added here in the TOC. Although this is good enough, the best practice is to format the document properly, which I'll show later. Let's add a page break here, so that the TOC will be a solo content on this page. Okay. As you can see here, all the bold and larger font size lines of text the document was considered by the table of content as a heading of that section, it automatically get all of that lines, added it to the table of contents, and listed what page in the document you can find them. All of that was executed automatically by MS Word. And as you might already know, all these text in the TOC are linked to the actual lines in the document, so clicking one item here in the TOC will take you to that line automatically. And as any text in the Word document, you can also format this table of contents as you wish, change the font size, colors, font face, and anything. But to have full control on the table of contents items, like what will be included and what hierarchy will be shown in it, we should format the document headers. For example, I will highlight this glossary line, then in the Home Ribbon Tab Styles section, I will select Title, making the glossary line a formatted as a title. I will also highlight this next bold heading line, and also assign it as a title. Then the next one, this should be under the previous one, so I will set it as a Heading 1. Title is the highest level in the hierarchy, Heading 1 is a child of a title, and Heading 1's child is a Heading 2, and so on. For this next two, I will set them as Heading 2, which means they are the third level in the hierarchy. Then the next one is another Heading 1. This one is another topic, so it will be another title. The next four headers will be set as Heading 1. Then the last headings left in the document will be set as Heading 2 again. Alright. The document is properly formatted for the table of contents now, but if we go back to the TOC, nothing has changed. That's because we still need to refresh it. To refresh the table of contents, just click anywhere on it, and above it, you will see here an option for update table. When we click this, it will give you an option if you want to refresh the page numbers only, or the entire table. Obviously, the first option will only update the page numbers in the right side of the TOC, while the second option will refresh the whole TOC. I'll select the entire table for now. There we go. Okay, I think both the title and the heading 1 are in the first level of hierarchy. I should have formatted the document with heading 1 to 3 instead to show a third level hierarchy here, but that's okay. I'm sure you get the point of how important it is to format your document properly in order to control the table of content list. Now let's try adding another section here by copying this title section. Let's paste it at the bottom of the document and call it conclusion. Going back to the TOC, we should be able to see the conclusion section when we refresh. But if we select to refresh the page numbers only, the content will not refresh, so conclusion will still not appear here. But, when we refresh the entire table, we will now see the conclusion section at the bottom of the list. Here we go. The paragraph might have been accidentally formatted as heading 2, as it also appears here. Let me highlight this paragraph and set its format to normal. All normal formatted text should not appear in the table of content. 
One final thing that I want to show you about Table of Contents is its customization. You can go to the References ribbon tab again, then expand the Table of Content ribbon, then click the Custom Table of Contents menu. This will open a dialog box showing you the preview of the Table of Content, along with some toggle options. The interesting option here is the Show Levels, which will let you control up to what level of hierarchy you want to show in the TOC. For example you only want to show up to Heading 1, you can select 1 here, and press OK. This will definitely be helpful if you want to have a cleaner and fewer details in your Table of Contents. But if you want to have more details in your TOC, then you can add more levels here depending on your need. And by the way, we've been talking about the table of contents in this video, which shows the page number of all these sections, but I'm just now noticing that we don't even have a page number in this document. So as a bonus tip, let's add a page number in the document by going to the Insert Ribbon tab, then expand the Page Number ribbon, and from here you'll have many options to add a page number, either at the bottom, at the top, and many page number style options. I'll choose one for the top here. Here we go. All our pages, except the cover page, are now showing a page number. Just double-click on the body of the page to exit the header footer view. And we're done. Speaking of page numbers, watch out for my next video where I will teach you how to manipulate page numbers in Word, like for example, having a page number begin on the third page of the document, or having two or three sets of pages numbers within one document. That will be fun. See you on that next video. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Millisuge for watching. Nova Air.